If you're looking to buy a wireless microphone system, you're going to need to understand a few things. It doesn't matter who you're buying it from, whether it's from DJI, Comica, Sennheiser, Rode, you're going to need to understand the key issues that pretty much every wireless microphone system has. Hey, what's going on guys? C. Santos here, and this channel is all about helping you and inspiring you to create content with whatever means necessary. So if you're interested in learning about gear, technology, or other ways of creating content, make sure you subscribe and the bell for notifications. So the other day I was watching one of Linus Tech Tips videos where he actually was talking about DJI's new wireless video transmission system. He had some really cool things to say about it. It's pretty amazing how far wireless transmission technology has come over the years and what's available for us prosumers, content creators, filmmakers, you name it. However, he had something very interesting to say that pretty much affects any wireless system out there. Before we do a long range test, we're gonna walk around our office a little bit, but there's a really important tool for us to look at first. This is their channel selector. So you can do this manually, but I'd recommend leaving it on auto. What it does is it will scan all the nearby channels and then jump around to whichever one is best. And particularly in an environment like this, where we have 11 access points, over 140 Wi-Fi connected devices and a total of 300 computers on our network at this time, there is a ridiculous amount of interference and it causes us legitimate problems in our production. Like say for example, with our wireless lavalier microphones, that's why we have to wear these backups that record locally. The issue he talked about regarding their wireless transmission systems that they use for their production is actually pretty common. I remember when Rode launched their first generation wireless go, having to use it was a pain. I had so many situations where the audio would just completely cut out for up to one second, sometimes it's microseconds, but it was really annoying to fix in post. Sometimes you couldn't even fix it. So you just had to find a creative way, a creative solution to edit that audio in the video and rely on the backup audio, which is in this case was a shotgun mic. But if you're not close enough to the subject, obviously you're gonna have issues. And that's what actually drove me to make this video was hearing him, Linus, a big production company, having problems with the wireless transmission systems, specifically to microphones. And I wanna make sure you guys understand before buying any system, what you're gonna get yourself into and knowing which system to get that will prevent any issues when it comes to either during production or in the post-production workflow that you have. So first off, you're going to need to understand how these systems actually work. That way you make the best educated choice when it comes to you buying one of these systems that I'm gonna mention in this video. And by the way, everything, all the resources and equipment that I use to create content and in the equipment I mentioned in this video is linked down in the description down below. Now there are two types of systems. There are UHF based wireless transmission systems and there is digital. Both of them have their pros and cons. One of them most of the time being that one is more expensive than the other. Some of them have licensed bands that you can actually use. There's so much I can dig into just specifically UHF. I can make a whole video on that. Now when it comes to digital microphones, all the systems available for us run on the 2.4 gigahertz wireless spectrum, which if you don't already know, this is a very common signal that a bunch of devices use in your house from your microwave, from your smart toaster, your smart fridge, your phones, your printers, your alarm systems, they all run off of these wireless bands and that can actually pose a problem and it actually does pose a problem, especially if you have a lot of these signals around you, specifically in an office environment, like how Linus mentioned in his video. All right, now that you understand the technology behind these systems, you now understand the problems that happen and specifically dropouts. Now dropouts occur when these wireless systems encounter too many other devices on the similar channel, which results in dropouts. And these dropouts can happen and you can actually see them or in this case, hear them in the post-production workflow whenever you're actually playing back the video, you'll notice a little in the audio that was being recorded into the device. And like I mentioned earlier, it's really annoying. There's some little things here and there that you can do to fix the audio to make it a little more seamless so the dropout isn't as harsh, but in reality, you just don't want this to happen. It can be really annoying to fix all of these dropouts. This is why I highly suggest that you do research with whatever system, even if it's not one that I mentioned in this video, that you make sure that there isn't any issues. And if there is any issues with dropouts, which most likely there is, that there is some sort of backup option for you to save that audio. And now since all of these systems are wireless based, obviously you're gonna be running through some batteries. Most of the systems you see out there on the market are sold as rechargeable or have the ability for you to change the batteries out if you're looking at some really high end options out there. Depending on which system you're looking at, the battery range may vary anywhere from five hours all the way up to 10 hours, depending on how you use it. 
and whether or not you have some of the features enabled within the system itself. It's important to note that you need to consider battery life, especially if you're someone who is a like, for example, a wedding videographer, and you wanna make sure that your talent is obviously labbed up, so you record their vows or record what they're doing throughout the day so you can use some of that dialogue in the video. All right, and now since these systems are wireless based, you're going to need to understand one major thing that ticks off a lot of people out there, including myself, and that is interference. So for example, when you're using some of these systems around your camera, you may run into a problem where the microphone, the wireless lab system is actually interfering with the internal recording of the camera. This is a common problem, especially with the Rode mics if you look online. However, if you look at the DJI systems too as well, people have been complaining about it as well. This has a lot to do with the fact that most of the camera systems out there have Wi-Fi capabilities. So there's some interference going on with the band specifically with whatever system you might be looking at. And now do you remember in the beginning of this video when Blindness was mentioning how they actually use a separate system for their productions? When it comes to using any wireless system out there, there are only two systems that I know of that actually record internally in that $300 range. Again, I'm specifically talking about the $300 range, which is pretty entry level consumer grade wireless microphone system. And that is the Rode Wireless System Go 2 and the new DJI microphone system that actually just launched not too long ago. Now, let me be clear. I actually have a bias. Again, I bought in Rode products. I've used their products for years. I've, again, I've had issues with the Gen 1 system I used to have. So I do have a bias there, just letting you know. However, the Rode system is the only one I actually had a chance to use. I used, I had a chance to use both generations, Gen 1 and Gen 2. And now knowing that, I would highly, highly recommend you stay away from Rode's Gen 1 system. Their Generation 1 system was a game changer when it came out. However, I had so many issues with it, and a lot of people online had so many issues with it. You just look up on YouTube, you'll see so many people complaining about the dropouts and pretty much how worthless it is when it comes to you using it for an actual professional setup. So Rode Wireless Go 2 has the ability for you to internally record. However, you actually have to go and turn this on within the system itself. It comes turned off. I remember learning this when I wanted the backup recording and it wasn't available because I did not turn it on. However, since these systems are recording internally into the device, you're actually going to end up going through more power. So the quoted five or six hours might not be that long when it comes to you actually recording. So just keep that in mind when you're recording using these systems because you're going to need to charge them a lot more often than they normally would be if you had the system turned off. And now I have no experience with DJI system. However, I just have seen the videos you've probably seen yourself online and all the articles around it. So don't take my word for it. I would highly suggest you probably try a system out somewhere if there's a possibility for you to use a system and see its pros and cons. I have read and heard some things where people were complaining about their lavalier mic causing interference with the system, acting as an antenna, thus causing interference within the recording that's being sent into the system. So again, don't take my word for it, do your research and just make sure that you pick the system that's right for you. And some other notable mentions when it comes to wireless microphone systems is Deity's pocket wireless system, as well as Sennheiser's portable lavalier system. The only issue that I have with both of these systems is that both of them do not offer internal recording and both of them have had issues of people complaining about dropouts. So again, just from what I've told you a few minutes ago, I would highly suggest not you not getting any system that doesn't have a backup recording. And last but not least, no matter what system you end up deciding to get, you just wanna make sure that it has good support. And what I mean about support is a warranty. Does it have a good warranty? Does it have a return policy from where you're buying it through? Because again, technology can fail. Uh, I've talked about this microphone I'm using in this video, failing the first day I had it. So again, there's a lot of issues that can come down the line. You just never know. Uh, do you need insurance on the device? All these other things. When it comes to using it in a professional environment, you wanna make sure you're covered and protected. It doesn't matter which system you get just always think about how you might need that tech support down the line. So again, just make sure that you do your due diligence when it comes to you getting any of these systems, because at the end of the day, you're gonna be dropping what, 200, 300, close to $400, depending on which system you're gonna get. And the last thing you wanna do is for that to go to waste and you have to either return it and deal with the hassle or the worst thing to ever happen to anyone is the system failing and not working when you need it the most. So I really do appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to me talk about 
my experiences with these systems and the pros and the cons of these systems as well as some little known things about wireless microphone systems. And again, I appreciate you guys so much. All the systems mentioned in this video are linked down in the description below. Be sure to use those links. They are affiliate links, so I do get a kickback and it helps this channel out tremendously. And as always, you guys, have a great day.